to quote Shakespeare, let's shoot this. Let's shoot the fucker. All right. This is Bonehead Weekly. Who was and the fucker? Pucker, fucker. Uh, we are actually doing a show about You know, 19- you can just ask nicely. You can just, you don't have to add the F bomb on me. You could just say pucker, sir. Or per- buddy, would you pucker? I might. No, no, I no. want the fucker. <laughs> It's like you never heard a Hungarian accent. Anyway, shoot the bitches. Shoot the bitches. Shoot the fuckers. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot of F words in this first part of it. If you're our children listening, you should not do that. I don't let my child listen to this because he has no desire to. Anyway, this is Bonehead Weekly, and this episode is what you've all demanded because you loved <laughs> 1989, 1982, and 1994. But we don't care if you loved them or not. We still want to do 1984. Which yeah. is really important because to understand 1984, you have you to understand, understand 1983. Let's go that, back. That while about... writing it, George Orwell was fighting tuberculosis. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then he wrote that novel about mutant cows taking um, over Nevada. He actually originally named the novel 1980 and then 1982 before he changed it to 1984. All that's true. Uh, some people think since it was written in 1948, he inverted that, though other people dispute that he actually was writing it in 1983. Um, but he himself worked as snacks now. Uh, he himself worked as a propaganda expert. Did you know that during World War II? He was a British propaganda expert. I did not know that. Uh, tell me more about Ian Fleming and how he was an asshole. Um, he almost died while writing the novel, not due to tuberculosis. He actually was on a recreational boating trip. And he went overboard, and he had breathing problems because of the tuberculosis. <laughs> Kurt Russell almost, saved him, <laughs> and then he, he moved in with Kurt Russell, and then he, he was he was drowned. mother to Kurt Russell's kids. Okay, because he didn't pay Kurt Russell because it, if you're going to build a closet, it must be made out of cedar. And, is it, and what you've got to understand that, also is no wait, hold on. Ironic is it, is it, about 1984. Oh my god! <laughs> is that while he was writing it, Gary was Marshall's under, best film. He was under government surveillance himself because they were afraid that he was actually becoming a socialist as he wrote this. And since he was already, they knew he was a propaganda expert during his time in the war, they were afraid he would turn his powers toward being a socialist okay, propaganda he's say Sith because Now, now, Joe, now yeah. Joe, is it bad that I almost physically groaned because I thought you were making a Captain Ron reference, and then I quickly recovered because I'm like, oh, he's going overboard, and I'm I okay. I went overboard, man. <laughs> I like Captain Ron. I do. I know you do. I like Captain Ron. I'll defend it. And this is where he's going to talk about the John Carpenter story. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I like Captain Ron. I'm just saying overboard. Gary Marshall, that and nothing in common are Gary Marshall's two best films. I, yeah, there's no argument there. Was Gary Marshall at all involved in Nothing to Lose? Because that film's about I No, but that's a movie that's very good that people never talk about. Nope. That's um, a very uh, funny picture. So outside of my literary reference uh, to the work uh, 1984, we, of course, are actually talking about movies. Chad, released. tell us about what tragedy struck in 1984, other than what tragedy struck at 12-12-20 uh, at 10-05, where we had to listen to James talk about <laughs> 1984. Well, let's Keep talk reading, about James. Well, we're going to talk about we're going to start with the depressing and then we'll, 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 we'll build up from the, 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 the non-depressing. So depressing. Yeah. Gandhi, Gandhi. Gandhi. <laughs> Gandhi, gone tomorrow. <laughs> Gandhi and Marvin Gaye were both killed in 1984. By uh, each other? That, no, both, no it was by Marvin Gaye's dad killed them both. Yeah. <laughs> was it a duel that went wrong? Because I'd watch that movie right now. Somebody out there is a Marvin Gaye fan in his pants. What's going man. on? Uh, <laughs> Um, the sat- the satanic panic was uh, set in, full full blown satanic panic. Is that um, did Araldo's special come out then, or was that I a believe, year later? I believe it came. I don't think it came out in 1984. I think it was like right at the night. It was. The I next remember year. my mom watching it, and it kept going. Now this is the next part where you're gonna have to send the kids to bed. I was there. <laughs> and then um. Get to bed. And not only was so, not only did we lose two icons, not only was the satanic panic ruining people's lives aids came along in 1984 hiv was officially identified i was about to say it'd been here for a while yeah well it was officially identified in 1984 um and And by the way one quick quick you know what else marvin Gaye and gandhi had in common i'm afraid to ask 
pimps. Oh yeah. Okay. I thought they both that's where you were like going. the they both like the women. Yep. You talk about one, but you don't necessarily talk about the other. Everybody oh, God, leaves Marvin to... Gaye out of it. And, and by the way, once again, I just want to say pimps. Uh, they both, pimps they both were assassinated. Suicide. Yeah, they both were assassinated. They did not commit suicide. No. But, uh, no. Uh, no. Apple aired the 1984 suicide. commercial for Macintosh directed by Ridley Scott. Purple Rain was number one. Yeah. Um, Wendy's Rain. wondered, Wendy's wondered, where's the beef? Michael That's Jackson, like, Michael Jackson's hair caught on fire. Mm. And then the most important aspect of 1984, hour-long infomercials became a thing. I oh really? They didn't yeah. exist before 1984. No, they were they were officially the norm as of 1984. Okay. Um, I and, thought uh, George Went was the norm. <laughs> you really I, were giving me shit earlier, Chad, and that he just did that. He I, just I'm did sorry. that. I was no, actually, sorry. I could make. I still love you. It's one of his better jokes. Yeah. (laughs) What's that say about the rest of his? And then just real quick, before we we get into the movies, let's talk about TV. The top five TV shows of 1984 were Dynasty, Dallas, The Cosby Show, 60 Minutes. Still popular. And Family Ties. And then number, and what's more depressing is 60 Minutes beat out the A-Team. That was number six. There was only two of those shows that my family watched. You see, Joe, Chad, this ain't Dallas, and this ain't Dynasty. Dynasty. My mom and dad watched Dallas, and we did watch Family Ties. I think. See, the only the only show my, my mom and dad watched Dallas, and uh, we as a family watched the Cosby Show. Huh? I don't remember watching a lot of no. Cosby. Maybe I, I should throw some things at my family. I loved the Cosby Show when I was a kid. Now today, regardless of you know the horrible, horrible things. I've tried no, watching Felicia that show. Rashad. I've I was about to, to say, it. does it hold up? No, I don't care for it. I never, I, I watched it as an adult and I'm like, uh, it's with most 80s sitcoms. I just, they're boring. They're not funny. Don't you dare. Besmirch. It's not Night Court. Besmirch, give me a break. Nell Cotter. That show's not good either. I, I, where would you find it? I don't know, but I've watched <laughs> I watched. You I watched it um, when we were in college, Joe. Uh, it was airing on one of those TV. One of the, it was airing on one of the cable stations. Did it come did, on after Buy a Hog, Sell a Dog? Probably. Huh. It just wasn't good. It just none of those shows. I, now, now, how about get a life? Amen. None of those. Not get, not get a life. What's the the one with Del? No, the the lady with the four girls. Oh, give me a break. Facts of life. Facts of life. See, you take the good, you take the bad. Girls, girls, girls. And there you have the facts of life. Now we better get into watch that. We better get into the films of 1984. See, the world never seems a team living up to your dreams. So was a team still on air in 1984 on the air? Yeah, it was. It was number six in that year. Ooh, what was number five? Uh, Number five was Family Ties. Uh, You missed that. Dynasty was no, I didn't. I thought you only read four. No, I no, read five. five. Fam- oh, family well, ties I mean, was sorry. Five. I can't do math. <laughs> he can't smell feelings. Well, seven. Just go ahead and do the top ten. Do you have the top ten? Well, I'll pull it up real quick. Now I'm curious. While he does, while he's pulling that up, I'll read of this. Don't you dare okay, read out of she that She whispered book. fiercely. Here we go. Uh, tied for number ten was Falcon Crest and Click Crazy Like a Fox. Never. Rem- I don't remember that one. Neither Falcon I. Crest, I remember. A cheers was twelfth, by the way. Was that oh. the first season of Cheers, though? No, it, oh Cheers had been – that should have been the second or third season of Cheers. Uh, yeah, it was It was 12th. It had a 19.7 share. Hmm. Um, not oh, landing. Crazy Like a Fox. Is, was that – was uh, tied for 10th? Yes. yes. That was Jack Warden and John Rubenstein. I know who Jack Warden is. Keep going, yeah. Chad. They were um, rough and tumble private detectives, Harry Fox Sr., and it worked with his San Francisco lawyer son – Harrison Fox Jr. Doesn't do it. Crazy like a fox. So anyway, uh, Knott's Landing, mm-hmm. Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. Simon and Simon. Yeah. And the A-Team rounded out the top 10. How okay, long Simon Murder, and Simon. She Wrote run? A long time. Oh also, I forget about how big of a show Simon and Simon was because I didn't watch it. I never, yeah. But it was another one of those huge shows. I tell you, TV doesn't last, does it? No. I mean, and and but now uh, not till it gets rebooted as a movie. By the way, if you're listening, Hollywood, by the way, we'll this uh, the big screen adapt 
adaptation of Simon, <laughs> Simon and Simon, Simon right now. But yeah. the, ser- the murder she wrote ran for 12 seasons with 264 episodes. I 1984 when it went off. They did an hour long retrospective before the final episode. And my, I can remember, I think it was my mother said, I, I'm it just took James an hour and a half to watch it. <laughs> I, no, I just, I remember my mother being afraid that Angela Lansbury was sick. That's why they were ending the show. She goes, it's still a good rating. Well, did you him. walk? I want you to drive back to Moorhead, go up Christy Creek, and you tell her that bitch is still alive. Yeah, she's doing cameos in Mary Poppins. She wasn't even in that picture. Uh, Murder She Wrote, that 1984 was the premiere of Murder mm, She Wrote. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to, and then we need to get into movies, but I'm going to bitch real quick because number all the way down to number 20 for 1984, Night Court. Yeah. <laughs> It should have been higher up. Well, that nobody a, watches twenty two. Nobody watches Falcon Crest now either. T- tied for twenty, tied for twenty second highest rated show in nineteen eighty four. Scarecrow and Mrs. King, The Fall Guy, and TV's bloopers and practical jokes. <laughs> By the way, The Fall Guy has a great theme song. <laughs> yeah, and a cool Chevrolet truck or GMC truck. Yeah. And Joe got to talk to the star. Of the I, I have met the fall guy, and he is a nice enough character. Just asked me not to talk about his ex-wives. Yeah. So James, let's get into the movies now that we've gone on about 1984. Get and me drunk, and I'll tell you about the plastic surgery lines. Keep going. Uh, January 1984, there was one movie released on the 1st of January 1984. It was not a big hit, but I want to bring it up. Because I, I've never seen it, and I'm interested now. Uh, they released it in America on the first, and it was called Ordeal by Innocence. Have y'all ever heard of this? Show? No. God, is it, is it a made? For, it sounds like a made-for-TV movie. She movie. She suffered based, in silence, starring that the, the, starring the female lead from Who's the Boss. It is based on an Agatha Christie novel, and here's the summary of it: Doctor Calgary returns oh home God. from an yeah. expedition i'm already done look- <laughs> what i'm already done goes looking for a hitchhiker whom he gave a lift to two years previously because the man left his address book in the car oh my God. he discovers that the man has been executed for his mother's murder and he then tries to solve the case do you know who stars in this movie that mm, none of us have seen no no Donald Sutherland as Dr. Arthur Calgary. Faye yep. Dunaway as R- Rachel Argyle. Christopher Plummer is Leo Argyle. Ian McShane is Philip Durant. And it's got a bunch of other people, too. I just, with that cast, you would think somebody would say, hey, an Ag- based on an Agatha Christie novel, which for those that aren't aware, they keep making movies based on her works. Now, in all fairness to Agatha Christie novel, and I, the main reason why you not only was the plot nauseating, but you know what really sold me off on that movie? You just, the character names. Every, Argyle, Calgary. What did she do? Just look, I mean, was she yeah. looking at a National Geographic? What the hell? I'm changing my name to Fontaine Kilgore. <laughs> oh my God. I, you would. I mean, that would be. A- <laughs> These are all streets within Lexington. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I be your assistant? I words, Can I be Fontaine the assistant? Kilgore, Esquire. Can I be uh, your assistant to detective, uh, uh, let's see, Nicholasville Man of War? <laughs> Nicholasville Man of War. I'd, I'd call myself doctor, but all I got's an EDD. James, that was an insult <laughs> to you and Jill Biden. <laughs> uh, I don't have an EDD. I have a piece. Has anybody read that article? All right, let's not get the article. I have, but yeah. uh, it's the best I know. Bag. Not her. Not her, the guy writing the article. Yeah, yeah. The, the guy that doesn't have anything. An EDD, that. yeah. But I can't call myself a doctor. Uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, Ordeal by Innocence, I've never heard of it. But it's I've never heard of it cast, uh, So I wanted to begin with it. But it released on January 1st and evidently was not a huge hit, despite having a pretty good cast for 1984. Um, they didn't have a theatrical total on what it made. I s- swear that sounds like a made-for-TV movie. Next there were two week. other ind- uh, low-budget films that released um, Violated on January 2nd. January 5th got us El Sur. I was going to say, violated um, is how I feel every time we start this show. <laughs> if y'all want me to detail any of these, let me know. January nope. 11th, we no. get two other films, both of which we do not have data on because they didn't make enough. That would be El Norte and Pranam Carmen, which I think are both international films. 
January 11th, though, we get the first uh, major weekend where they were, I'm sorry, I said um, it's January 13th. We get the first um, uh, movies that were released. Uh, one of them was not a hit. It was mm-hmm. the drama Cover Girl. But released the same weekend were two movies that both went on to gross. I was going to say, is it about the obscure G.I. Joe character? <laughs> I forgot about Cover Girl. <laughs> um, also, Scarlet got all the attention. Nobody talks about Cover Girl. <laughs> I, tr- I tried showing my kid a GI Joe, and I swear to God, I was watching it, going, "This shit's too violent for him." Who was letting me watch this? They shoot the shit out of everything, and they they yeah, don't stop either. They don't stop. Everything's blown to hell. I mean, it was a lot of fun, but. Two movies did, that came out this weekend both made uh, by the around way, seventeen million. Actually, both of them made seventeen million five hundred thousand. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yes. Let's talk about an evening with us. Now, now, you listeners, imagine being in a room with Joe and I, uh, watching GI Joe, and every time they go to commercial break, we go, "Aw!" And then when they go, "Do do 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 do," we go, "Yay!" <laughs> you have no recollection of this. Now, I, were we drunk? No, we were completely sober. We were just excited that we got G.I. Joe on DVD. Somebody, I am so sorry. I, I and I don't, I, this is probably people are going to think this is a joke. Alzheimer's runs in my family. If I live old enough, I'll probably get that shit. <laughs> I, you are the second person today who has said you were there. You don't remember this. And I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't think I said that. Did I say that in that no, race? You were the second person who has brought something up like that. Very well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> However, I said good I, <laughs> I am going to tell you that I'm not going to argue with you because it indeed sounds like something I would do. We seriously sit there and watched an entire probably two hours of G.I. Joe, and every time they'd go to commercial, we go, oh, and oh. then when they'd, they'd go, did it, did it, did it, we go, we, yeah. I agree. Chad's got that sweet ass box set in that locker that I always wanted. I just have I them on have DVD. <laughs> I just have all the episodes. I thought you hit the box locker. No, I thing. did not get this. I did not get the foot locker. Well, I'm sorry. He has that sweet ass Ghostbusters uh, Act- time yes, live. I do, I do have the firehouse with the firehouse. Yes. Bastard. Joe James, go on. <laughs> okay. And by the way, because we're going to get to it in a minute. Do you know who likes extreme Ghostbusters from the nineties? No. Sean He's Connor. about this tall. Oh, sorry. Found it on Hulu. Throw him in the throw him in the orphanage. It's that a little show. dark for him, but he yeah. keeps, he's, a, he's just like this. And it's, tr- oh, it's just, ugh. keep going. Sorry. Be smirched the name of Ghostbusters. He Should, saw it when it was really? flipping through and wouldn't, it's the not best, that bad. The best thing about Extreme Ghostbusters is the opening song. Yeah. I, actually, I think it's a little dark. It, it may be darker than any of the other. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. We're James. Two two James. movies, Where seventeen are they? million five hundred thousand. Been talking Only forever. About forty thousand uh, dollars. The first of them has the epic tagline, and let's see if y'all can guess the film. The tagline is "Honor student, honor student by day, hooker by night." Oh my God! I don't know what it is. Oh, let me give you the plot line then. Fifteen-year-old oh, <laughs> Molly is the best in her class in high school. Nobody suspects that the model pupil earns her money at night. As the prostitute angel on Sunset Boulevard. Is this hard the movie, bodies? The movie is called Angel. It is an action crime th- thriller where Molly, a high schooler, is a prostitute, goes by Angel, but a serial killer starts killing prostitutes. And, and she's 15? And she's 15. To quote our governor, you can't be doing that. <laughs> it um, was the early 80s. And I, so she. I she, know. Her, her her only family and friends are the ones she works with on the street, and she has to survive against a serial killer who is targeting people of her profession. Starring Cliff Gorman, Susan Tyrell, Dick Sean, Rory Calhoun, <laughs> and Donna Wilkes as Angel. I know it, who uh, Dick Sean was. $17 million. It was directed by Robert Vincent O'Neill. Do you know Robert Vincent O'Neill? I do not, dude. No. Robert Vincent O'Neill uh, directed... His number one movie was Shocker Angel, <laughs> but he also wrote Lady Blue, uh, the TV series, and a, a, a TV series called Wonder Women. And um, he was in the art department on Easy Rider. That being said, his movie did make seventeen million dollars against the other movie 
that also made $17 million. What was the that, other movie, James? That came out this weekend. And I, of course, refer to a movie that you all might remember a little bit better. And that would be Hot Dog, the movie. Yeah. Anybody want to talk about Hot Dog? Because I don't know enough about Hot Dog. <laughs> I honestly, I don't think I honestly, ever saw I can't. Dog. I, 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 that is a friend of ours. I will tag him in this. Jimmy Salyer is one of his favorite movies. He's the father of our ex producer, Haley. That's one of his favorite movies. And I, I, I'm, uh, I'm ashamed of being a child of the 80s, and I don't think I've ever seen it. I'm ashamed to admit that. It stars David Naughton. How could you not see? But and by the way, it's one of the things we always make references to directly and indirectly. It is one of those classic ski championships. Yeah, movies. I oh know. Arkin Banks head to ski heads to skiing championships in California, where he's joined by a teenage teen runaway as he parties and competes with his friends and foes. Hot dog the movie. I th- oh it, man, it was directed by um, Peter Markle. Yeah, you have to narrow that down for me. Uh, Peter Markle, he directed Bat Twenty One. Oh, and, Bat 21, I know. And the last, and a, a personal favorite of mine that don't ask me anything about it, I just remember loving it as a child, the la- or as a teenager, The Last Days of Frankie the Fly. With Dennis you know Hopper? Who, um, yes. I've never was, seen it. It was written I saw by... saw Bat 21 when I was a kid. That's kind of um, screwed up childhood. It was written by Mike Marvin. You know what Mike Marvin went on to do, right, Joe? No. So he directed your favorite Charlie Sheen killer... <laughs> The Wraith. He directed The Wraith, Joe. See, he wrote this in 1984. It got to direct it, the next year. And then he became an additional crew member off on Better Off Dead, which led to The Wraith, directing The Wraith. He also uh, directed... Um, he directed uh, Hamburger, the movie. Um, uh, like Getting Marvel. Away and Sunstorm, and has a movie coming out in 2021 where he's a second unit director nobody wrote it down tales of the black pioneers which i would assume is a documentary though i'm not going to look that up to find out but there you go i need it to watch hot dog back the movie. to your love of the wraith i need to go watch hot dog the movie seriously it's a shame that i haven't seen it what's next weekend okay we get to january 20th and remember all those 17 million dollar movies i just talked about nothing that came out this weekend went on to make 17 million dollars <laughs> um one of them went on to make uh nothing called the loveless i I don't know it don't 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 uh scandalous made half a million dollars yeah winner quote unquote for this weekend which during its entire run would go on to make one million eight hundred twenty thousand dollars i refer to of course the buddy system no idea directed by Go we're doing better in 1982 we were it was almost march before in 1982 we knew anything Directed by Glenn Jordan, this uh, story tells uh, it's about a quiet school truant officer named Joe who uncovers a young boy's attempt to fake a residential address and subsequently gets involved romantically with the boy's mother. Stars Richard Drivers, Susan, Nan- uh, S- Susan Sarandon, Nancy Allen, Gene Stapleton, and a young Will Wheaton. I have never heard of that movie. The Buddy System. Gene Stapleton. Go. That's that's what's her face from all Eat the it. family. Do you know real quick because it's 1984 Murder She Wrote. That was the original pick for that lead character. Yeah, Gene Stapleton turned down Murder She Wrote. Next, you know, I, I I I I can see that. I know she did a lot of Broadway and a lot of stage for years. Yep, yep. So, um, so Angela was, Lansbury has thanked her on more than one occasion. Not so much recently. Well, I mean, unless she gets a Ouija board. Uh, <laughs> January 27th, we get three more movies come out. Only one of these broke $10 million. I'll start with the lowest one. And this is a movie I have not seen, but I want to mention it. Slayground. <laughs> have you Slayground? heard of Slayground? No. It was released in the Are United Kingdom in 1983. In 1984, it came to America. Directed by Terry Bedford. Starring Peter Coyote, Mel Smith, and Billy Whitelaw. Thieves run over a child while escaping after a robbery. A deadly hitman who likes to taunt his targets is hired to track them down. Stone, who is one of the thieves, moves to England to try to escape him, but the assassin follows, loosely based on Donald Westlake's cult crime novel. There you go. And by the way, if you don't know who Peter Coyote is, our listeners, uh, he's the reason why you always want to go to Home Depot. Oh, is he the voice of Home Depot? I had no idea, Chad. Now that you've said that, it's ruined it, though. Every time I, 
It's like E.T.'s dad, which he's not. I, he's not even, he's not, he doesn't even show up till halfway through the movie. The other movie that I only thought went- that was the voice. Who's the other actor? Is the other guy do Lowe's? The one who was in Poseidon. <laughs> oh, man. That- Hold on. Hold you on. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Does he do Lowe's? Oh, no. <laughs> I think he does Lowe's. The guy that was in Poseidon for like a hot second, he was like the next Paul Newman, and then it didn't work out. Oh, shit. I was wrong. It's Josh. It says it's Josh Lucas as the voice. That's not right. Josh Lucas. Yeah, the Home Depot. Yeah. I Never stop Peter- improving or whatever. I thought it was Peter Coyote. Mm. Told you. Whenever, whenever you're don't, right. <laughs> don't you all argue with me about my Poseidon cast. Keep going, James. One movie went on. To I love four stealth. Movies. <laughs> nobody's ever gonna fucking remember stealth hey that's it jessica got, uh, bill and jamie fox it's and, written by uh, wd richter who, oh i know uh, man who, uh, who directed adventures of buckaroo Banzai. uh this the, the next movie that went on to make four million eight hundred thousand dollars is probably the best movie about a person who worked for a greeting card company i refer to steve martin in the lonely guy the lonely guy yeah that's um, not a good Steve Martin movie. No, but it's got Charles Grodin in it too. I actually have seen that before. It's it's kind of boring. Directed by Arthur Hiller, mm-hmm. who is better known for Love Story, and of course, much better known for the for classic classic "See No Evil, Hear No Evil." What? <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Heck actually, I said. don't remember who did he direct Bonnie and Clyde. No, no, he did who Love Story. Bonnie? Uh, the hospital and the in-laws. Oh, and uh, Sino- okay. Uh, and Man of La Mancha. Next weekend, Jazz. Well, the number one this weekend. Though, I just want to say, um, I I know Peter Coyote did Home Depot <laughs> commercials. <laughs> it's Josh Peter Lucas, Co- buddy. <laughs> no, but he at one point he did Peter Coyote. I'm pretty sure at one point did Home Depot commercials, and he's also the voice of Ken Burns documentaries. I'd say <laughs> something. No, he Ken actually walks. Ken Burns. Ken Burns. He walks behind Kim Burns with his hand up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse to get is, a haircut that makes me look like an adult. Here's your episode title: Ken Burns is the ultimate Muppet. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> episode title: 1984. Ken Burns is the ultimate, ultimate Muppet. Muppet. Um, the number one movie that would go on to make the most that came out this weekend is, of course, Broadway Danny Rose. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, which is uh, directed and stars. Thank you, Luxus.com, for per- confirming that Peter Coyote did, in oh fact, do Home Depot. <laughs> Let it go, man. Did he also unless, do Lexus commercials? Uh, no. <laughs> and, unless they're sponsoring it. But yeah, Broadway Danny Broadway Rose. Danny Rose is, yeah. is Woody Allen directing, writing, and starring with Mia Farrow. And nothing ever happened between those people ever. And let's just move on. Oh, yep. who is, yeah, no. Yeah, let's skip it. It's a good um, movie. So we end. That's January. I'm trying to remember the plot. It's him. It's, isn't it him wooing Mariel Hemingway? I don't remember. I could be wrong. Now I Mariel go Hemingway's in a couple of his movies, and she also in Manhattan. She's a young girl in Manhattan. Keep going, James. While Chad going. looks this uh, up. February third. There's a couple yes. independent films that are released uh, on February first. Scrubbers and Strangers Kiss. They yep. don't make any splash. Uh, February 3rd, though, we get two movies. One's a drama, Reckless. Mm-hmm. Nope, Anybody that is not Broadway, about... Danny Rose. Sorry, James. Anybody know anything about Reckless? Because I don't. No. Nope. Nope. The other one, though, was a big hit. Well, modest hit. A uh, big hit for the time compared to everything else that came out. It went on to make $21 million, and I doubt anybody really thinks about this movie today. Weekend Pass. But is Weekend, Weekend Pass... pass. Weekend Pass was directed and written by Lawrence Bassoff. Am I saying that correctly? Um, I don't know. He only directed one other movie in two or in 1987. Oh, he would right. direct Hunk. Oh, I've think. seen Hunk. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. California Hunk. It's about a guy who makes a deal with a devil. Oh well, there you go. Weekend um, Pass looks terrible. 
We can pass. So is Hunk, Chad. Three rookie sailors who have just completed basic training are out on their first weekend pass. As they hit one bar after another, they soon forget everything the Navy ever taught them. I think it's like, dude, where's my car for people in the Navy? Mm -hmm. Star D.W. Brown, Peter Ellenstein, Patrick Hauser, and uh, nobody else, really. I mean, no offense meant to anybody that was in this movie, but uh, those were the big three names at the top of the credits. Um, but it made $21 million. It was the highest grossing movie to this point in the year. I went hmm. on to make $21 million, and, and nobody remembers Weekend Pass. Um, so we jump forward to February 10th, and uh, two movies that don't make a big spa- splash. Uh, you get the documentary Burroughs, the movie, um, and you get Damn an gophers. international film, which I'm going to try to pronounce, Leotimo Cacciatore. I don't know. Uh, but the romantic comedy that comes in at number one for this weekend and will go on to make $19 million, almost $20 million, but still not what Weekend Pass would go on, is, of course, the classic film directed by Howard Zeif. Zeif? How is that pronounced? I don't know. But Unfaithfully Yours, yours starring yeah. Dudley Moore, Natasha Kinski, Armand Asante. I have seen it, but I cannot tell you anything about it. Not trying to, I, that sounds the like I'm. Two word summary is a composer suspects his wife of cheating, yeah. he wants to kill her and frame it on her lover. It's a romantic comedy, as most romantic comedies are about murdering your wife. Wife? Why, why did I say that? Yeah, it's Dudley Moore, the one leading man actor who, like, you know, nowadays that he would never be a leading man. <laughs> uh yeah i guess you're right uh so and natasha kinski we all know a bad story about that oh god yes i it took me a second to know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah move on move on February talk about shit 7th. that comes out on a show that is uh, where people could go to prison if they weren't already dead dig them up and put it in there anyway yeah that's true this is a reminder to everybody February 17th, we have a huge weekend. Is this um, really a huge weekend, like a legit huge weekend, or are you, are you just being... Uh, it's, it's, you're going to know these titles, and one of them actually is a movie that I want to see again, and I, have, I need to see if it's available anywhere. Star uh, Wars does not count. <laughs> the movies that didn't make a big splash were The Return of Captain Invincible. I have no idea. Didn't oh. bother to look it up. Crackers only made $50, $58,000, but here's the next three movies. The next lowest grossing one will go on to uh, to earn seventeen million five hundred thousand dollars. Hold on, Lassiter. Last yeah. real quick, you will want to see the return of Captain Invincible. Really, leading stars, Alan Arkin and Christopher Lee. Oh, really? I've never heard of it. In World War II, Captain Invincible used his superpowers against the Nazis, and he was a hero. But when they accused him of supporting the communists, he retired to Australia. Huh. Uh, written by Stephen D- Stephen D'Souza. Oh, okay. Well, now for our audience, if you don't know who that is, he wrote a ton of action scripts through the eighties and nineties. He really only directed one picture that I know of. It was the Street Street Fighter with uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, right, Chad? But yeah. I mean, he and I can't tell you all the movies he wrote because he ghost wrote for a decade a lot of action films. Yeah. yeah, so I now want to see this movie because I want to see Alan Arkin playing a superhero. Yeah, the uh, um, last Twitter is a movie that I, I used to watch on VHS. It was available. I've never local seen it. Movie never warehouse. Heard. It is if if you like Indiana Jones films, it was it was supposed to establish Tom Selleck as a big screen star. Matter of fact, they made the slogan for it: "The Magnum Man hits the big screen with the vengeance." Yeah. Uh, however, that wouldn't happen to Runaway. He uh, he plays a jewel thief who is operating in in the late 1930s in Germany when absolutely nothing was going on, uh, and he gets hired to steal some stuff from the Japanese or Japanese from the German embassy when nothing is going on in late 1930s Germany. Uh, it's it's him versus the Nazis, uh, so it kind of put him in the could have been Indiana Jones type mold. Um, Bob Hoskins is in this Jane Seymour, Lauren Hutton it's got a pretty good cast to it um, 
and there's one scene that I remember. Uh, he is uh, being wooed by a German woman. And she bites his lip until it bleeds, so he can't hide being with her. So any other woman he encounters will know that he got bit by a woman. That didn't happen. Um, that just happened to you. It probably probably just herpes. <laughs> anyway, that's all they just give me now. <laughs> Lasseter went on to make, uh, like I said, it made it made pretty good money. It did not make him a huge star though. The next movie though that made slightly more made eighteen million six hundred thousand. Blame it on Rio. Which, by oh the way, God. is one of Kevin Shelton's favorite films. Our friend Kevin Shelton. It's one of his favorite movies. And Kevin, if, if you're not, li- if you're, if you're listening to this, I we're will not have a surprised. heart attack. We're not surprised that that would be one of your favorite movies. Well, I, y'all know? I mean, anything about Blame, uh, Blame It on Rio? It's Michael Caine and who else? I can't remember. Is Michael it Joe Johnson, Bologna? Uh, I'm sorry, Michelle Johnson and Demi Moore. Who are the two guys? Oh, Joe Bologna. Yeah, Joe Jessica Bologna. Bologna. Yeah, yeah. Valerie so Harper. You, you guys aren't going to remember who Joe Bologna was. He's in one of my favorite movies, my favorite year, but never was a huge star. But my, yeah, they're trying to get it on. It's Rio. There's some topless people. I By actually way, this, have a. Go ahead. Uh, real quick, Chad, do you know how this connects to Supergirl? No. This movie is what caused Demi Moore to turn down playing Lucy Lane in Supergirl. She read both scripts and said, no, no, no. I want to do Blame It on Rio instead of Supergirl. In all fairness, I don't blame her for that decision because, oh, man, that movie's terrible. Yeah, but she would then say, if, it if she would have done it, she would have got some of that sweet, sweet cameo on Supergirl the series money. <laughs> True. <laughs> man, but, but Blame It on Rio is an awkward movie, but, you know, it does have, uh, what's her name? Michelle Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Who, yeah. So. I, it, yeah. What's the next one? Uh, the, the last one went on to make $80 million, but nobody ever talks about it anymore. It just involved kids losing their feet. Uh, Footloose. <laughs> oh, we don't really need to talk about Footloose, but I was never a huge fan. So I was a fan. Well, it's one of those movies that was like shoved down my throat as a kid and I had to like it. I had to find a reason to like it or I would just go insane by watching it. So out of all the dance movies, Footloose was my favorite. That being said, as I got older, I watched it and it goes, man, John Lithgow is okay in it, but everything else is just terrible. It's It's got a soundtrack that a lot of, uh, I listened to that soundtrack quite a bit. I can't remember who had it on a cassette tape, but it just kind of played and played. And I mean, played. it had Let's Hear It for the Boys and Footloose. Yeah, and it had a great soundtrack. I, great uh, but man, I, yeah. that was just crap. Bacon. It's got some bacon. It does have some bacon in it. I, I I haven't seen it in a long time, guys. I it has a paper thin plot too, right? Oh, huge. Yeah. And he kind of just kind of gives in the preacher dad at the end. So and then they kind of dance. But I mean it's it, that is one of those that hasn't James, I hope I'm using the word correctly, zeitgeist. It hasn't less yeah. lo- left the cultural zeitgeist. Not no. only is the music and the movie, I mean, it was a Broadway show, right? And a successful Broadway show, too. And it had a sequel, what, five years ago, six years ago? Did it really? Yeah. yeah. Had, or was it a remake? Was it a remake? Uh, or I, I, know I think was... they did a remake. Yeah, I think it was a remake. I forgot about it, but no, I don't I don't remember it. I never watched it, of course. All uh, right. Man, that was that was nine years ago, guys. We are in. I don't remember. We are in February, but there's an interesting thing about February 1984. I just gave you February 17th. Yeah. There is only one more movie released in all of February that year. Well, they knew Footloose was going to kill it. I evidently because they, Did only they really one. No, I doubt it. I was going to say, it. do you really think they looked at that? Ca- I mean, granted, so far. And I looked up Angel. That's a New World picture. I'm not surprised. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah, I was like saying, um, no, 1984 so far has sucked. Yeah. Um. So 1984, then we get one more movie that's an international release. There are so from February 17th until March 2nd, no other films come out but those except for one international release, Charlie Steele. Don't and Charlie it. Steele was a South African film. We did a sequel called Chuck Middle. And um here's are you happy the plot. With that? <laughs> it was like better in man? my head. It's better in my head. Chuck Middle. 
here's the plot and and I know when I make my gonna... GoBots Chuck Metal movie, you guys are gonna <laughs> suck it. I know Chad's gonna Chuck giggle. Chuck Metal at is the this... GoBots of Charlie Steele movies. I know <laughs> Chad's gonna giggle at the uh, at one at least one part of this. Let me let me read the summary to Charlie Steele. Okay. When Delami's daughter Dudu is kidnapped for <laughs> told you called it is kidnapped for ransom, he calls on his old friend Charlie Steele, a renowned private investigator. Charlie attempts to infiltrate the gang responsible but is soon exposed by one of his ex-army comrades, a vicious murderer by the name of Jimmy, working for the gangster known as Sonny. It was a South African film that got big enough that it did get picked up for an American release. That was the only other movie released in February. There you huh. go. Hold on. James, you've missed a couple. Um, in February? Yeah, February 22nd. Because I, I, I did a... Uh, a brief look up because I know 1984 was somewhat important for our favorite film company, Canon. I was looking for something too, and that was the only ones I saw. Chad, what'd you find? February 22nd, 1984. Emmanuel Four. <laughs> I don't look at certain lists, Chad. Emmanuel a- was what we call busy. It was from <laughs> Canon. Emmanuel Four was Canon. Um, and also, uh, it was canon in the Manuel series. <laughs> it yeah, changed I mean, the whole dynamic between it Star her. Wars. It don't mean <laughs> there's four nerds maybe got that joke. I mean, in space, it means C3PO. <laughs> oh. Oh. Human cyborg relations. Oh my God. <laughs> Human cyborg relations is funny. <laughs> oh, I'm Manuel. I just choked on my. <laughs> so did Emmanuel. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I could never make her choke. Uh, Keep going. So that was it till February. Or uh, that's it for February. March, <laughs> things get interesting, I think at least. Um, because there's a comedy that's released on March 2nd. March 2nd had a, a slew of movies released, but there's a comedy released that I've never heard of, and maybe it's my lack of culture because I was only four at the time and didn't get picked what I watched. That being said, Over the Brooklyn Bridge. That was a canon film. Uh, directed by Golan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Menaham Gold. Um, it's actually starring- pronoun- I'm so sorry. I'm not actually doing it to be a dick because it took me forever to get it. Menachem. Thank you. Menachem Golan. Thank you. You would I never look at that and think, but it's Menachem. Don't Over the me. Brooklyn Bridge has a cast that deserves some attention. Elliot Gould. Uh, Margot Hemingway and Sid Caesar. Oh, a Jewish man who owns a Brooklyn deli asks his domineering uncle for a loan so he can buy his dream restaurant in Manhattan, but the uncle demands that he give up his Gentile girlfriend. It's a comedy, 1904, over the Brooklyn Bridge. This may not shock you, Joe. I was somewhat not. listening to your cast, but I'm pretty sure you left out the amazing Burt Young. Uh, Dude, I'm, I'm he sorry. was too busy doing. Um, and Shelly Am- Winters. Am- You're Am- right. Amityville, too. You're right. I left out Shelly Winters, too. And Carol Kane. I deserve to. Carol Kane. Um, but that was the lowest earner. It only made a little bit over five. It made $590,000. That being said, the next biggest earner that weekend was a s- adventure film called Sahara. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with the Matthew McConaughey one, I'm sure. Yeah. That's also a, that's also a canon film, if I'm not mistaken. Never seen it. Um, then we get to a comedy that went on to make two million three hundred thousand dollars that some people still talk about repo man <laughs> okay <laughs> guys go ahead chad no i just don't care for repo man i don't either but it, it's been when i came along in the 90s as far as going to college i took a film class and a, and i actually hadn't experienced it or watched it and he shoved it down our throats and i yeah. felt like i got it shoved down my throats by other film snobs which i was yeah to. i like scenes in it but i would prefer to watch sid and nancy over his the, the director his movie yeah. sid and nancy is much better than repo man yeah but I, people love it still yeah, and i still the don't alex understand. cox alex cox took me a second yeah. I'm, I'm not I, looking it up but and was, with Repo Man, I really just don't get it because I'm like Joe. It was shoved down my throat by, and you know, my friend, my friend in high school, pretty much the only friend I had. But he was he was a film buff too, and he always he without him, I wouldn't have been introduced to several things that I would have never watched. But man, he tried to get me to like Repo Man, and I that and David Lynch. I wonder I just, if we went back and watched it now. 
I, I've watched well, you- it. I watched it in probably in my thirties, my early thirties. And I still did not care for it. I was bored. I, the ending just, I was like, Oh, it's just everything about that movie. I'm like, why do people obsess about it as much as they do? Well, I, it may be the fact that it's just so to borrow a Ellison line. It is bug fuck crazy. And if you imagine going into a theater in 84 to watch it, that's true. It was different than anything else you would have experienced. So if you've never watched Repo Man, I do. And if you're in the movies, I do suggest you watch it simply because so many people find it so important. Completely so agree. for people that have not seen it, do you all want to try to do a two sentence summer? Dude, it's so hard. <laughs> there, yeah, it's, no, it's Emilio Estevez and Harry Dean Stanton and their repo man for cars. And in one of these cars that they're trying to repo has some sort of alien bug fuck crazy thing in the back that will always evaporate people. Right. Chad, where am I going? That's about it. That's the only way I know how to describe it. And these it. guys all are repo men and they're all crazy. There's other movies. I, I'll tell you, I'll give it a compliment. There's other movies that have tried to do that. You know what it's a lot like? Um, it, I'm so sorry to say um so many times, but it's it, it's similar to bringing out Scorsese's bringing out the dead. Oh, yeah. Okay. You think? In the sense of there are all these different characters who are crazy. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't get, I'm not saying that the same. I it just, it, yeah. I, I was sitting here thinking, trying no, to find something it. that it's in the same kind of, you know, I, bringing out the dead is much more realized three dimensional. Yeah. I just, that one, that, I don't know. But, Maybe both, I'm but, wrong. But, but both are that, but both are pure ADD in my opinion. Cause it, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's I, to me, it's kind of in the same vein. One of them's a much well better made movie. I mean, Scorsese is a master, even though yeah. I'm still trying to finish the Irishman. Oh. Um, I like it. I think it's just four hours long. It's finding thirty minutes here, an hour there. So, hey, so man. Repo Man, Repo Man was, um, I said two million three hundred thousand. Uh, it was beat by a film that went on to make four million seven hundred thirty-six thousand that came out this weekend, and their speakers go all the way to eleven. This oh. is Final Tap. That's cool. Um. Yeah, so that's that one came out, but this is Final Tap got beat by another film that came out this weekend. And guess what? You're if you remember it, good for you. I was sitting there going, Oh, I don't know why more people don't talk about this, except it must not be the best movie of anybody involved in it. Harry and Son made four million nine hundred thousand dollars, directed by Paul Newman, starring Paul Newman, Robbie Benson, Ellen Mm. Barkin, Wilford Brimley, Ozzie Davis, Morgan Freeman. Maury Chaykin. Uh it's got a huge cast. And, Harry and, and Son. I don't I've never seen that. I don't even think I've ever heard of it. It it here's the plot summary because it doesn't sound like it has a plot. Harry Keach has been widowed for two years and works as a demolition crane operator on a demolition crew. That's mm-hmm. the summary. Uh and it's just about his life and about um, you know, how things aren't going well and he's got uh, health. It just issues. seems like one of those artsy no, not the slice of life. Well, not movie. every actor should direct. Yeah. Even if they're Paul Newman. Yeah. Uh, just, so, Harry and Son, though, I mean, it made more no than this is Final Tap, but everybody still quotes this is Final Tap. I've never, by the way, if you are a huge fan of Harry and Son and you want to argue your point, we'll bring you on the show. Us. We will bring you on the show. I, I, I want to know why. That being said, so that was $4,900,000, but it got buried by a film that. Oh. I thought uh, was, that was number one. I no, too. the number one movie this weekend went on to make over $25 million. And my parents, I've never uh, never watched it to my knowledge. My parents watched it though. And I remember my they got it on VHS years after it came out. And I remember my parents rented it. And my dad's exact review was, huh, everybody in that usually does better work. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Against all odds. Jeff Bridges, James Woods, Rachel Ward, a gangster hires an ex-football player to find his girlfriend. I don't think I've ever seen her, They that. fall in love, and the twists start to appear. My parents rented it and thought they were like, oh, my dad was like, oh, it'll be an action film. It's got some, but it does star one of Chad's all-time favorite people, Alex that- Karras, <laughs> is Hank Sully in Against All Odds. 
Uh, my dad, I just, I always, as soon as that appeared on the year, I was like, oh my God, it's that movie that my dad's review of, huh, most people in this usually do better work. So directed by Taylor Hackford. Oh, I know who Taylor Hackford is. Yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. I it just does not seem appealing to me at all. And honestly, Taylor Hackford, I think, has only done two movies that I genuinely like, and that would be Ray and uh, Dolores Claiborne. Oh, yeah. so you didn't care for The Devil's Advocate? Oh, he did The Devil's Advocate? Yeah. I stand corrected. I forgot yeah. he did Devil's Advocate. And and I'm about to I'm about to just get up and verbally bitch slap you that you're not, you know, being more supportive of Deborah Winger and her getting I out of that factory officer. and an officer and a gentleman. I um, hate officer and a, the only thing that's redeeming about officer and a gentleman is better look, say this. Yeah, okay. Gossett Jr. I kind of like Dead it. Ditch Lou Gossett Jr. Yeah, sorry, anytime I get a chance. Firewalker Lou Gossett Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, i don't know what epics is but they gave me the thing on the cable <laughs> and wh- I, I go through and one of the channels at 3 a.m it's sitting right over there dvr it is firewalker for me to rewatch this weekend whenever i Jeff, get a chance it's on amazon prime buddy oh fuck you chad <laughs> i don't have time to look for that firewalker <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I loved it as a kid. I did too. But I haven't not, seen it since I was not, a kid. Not as a 40-year-old person, no. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> but damn no, it. Uh, no, I, I, yeah, this it's amazing that all those came out in 1980 in the same week and Repo Man and This Is Spinal Tap got beat by those two dog turds. Yeah, I, yeah. that's what I mean. Um, so March 9th, is What's our next? next weekend, and we have five releases. Uh, one that doesn't make much of a splash at all is Roman Zaire. Okay. Don't know anything about it. Nope. Um, but then we move on to the next one. That's what James calls it his was, penis. It was a thriller <laughs> uh, suspense called Mike's Murder. Anybody? Anybody? What Mike's the Murder? hell? No. Mike's Murder. I, you know, I, I, I was, I, I was intrigued by the title. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with the fact that my <laughs> Mike name. been doing some and Mike been talking some shit, James. Um, but Mike's murder is in a LA. A young do. woman tries to uncover what led to the brutal murder of her old flame and who killed him. Directed by James Bridges, starring James Bridges, starring Joe Deborah Winger. Oh, love lift uh, us up, Chad, where we belong. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and say this: I'm not a Deborah Winger fan. Dude, not yeah, no, nope, no. Nope. She's uh, in an officer and a gentleman. Urban cowboy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a movie you, that's very much of its time. You what's, have not seen Mike's Murder though. That could be her greatest what's, film. Uh, we, what's, we used to know a guy who did a dead-on impersonation of "Get off that bull, CSA." I cannot do it as well as he can. It was pitch perfect. Black Widow has l- something to be desired. I haven't but, seen it since I was it, a kid. Uh, is it Terms of Endearment? Where, yes, in terms of fart, endearment. Where she farted on um, what's her Shirley McLean's face behind the scenes? Is that true? I swear, I think there's a story where Deborah Winger would come and fart on in Shirley McLean's face. I want it to be true. <laughs> I want it to be true. <laughs> you can want it on one hand and and yeah, and fart and, 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 and fart on Deborah Winger on the other. Yeah, Deborah Winger farted on Warren Beatty's sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, who hasn't? So so, uh, so we hit Roman's Ear, which was a romantic comedy that didn't make any money. Mike's oh, James Murder. Bridges also did Bright Lights, Big City. The the the. the, the can you believe Mike Michael J. Fox is a coke addict? <laughs> you no, Mike, you still can't. <laughs> Mike's Murder was the next one made one million one hundred. Uh, then we get to the one that made the drama that made five million one hundred forty two thousand. The Hotel New Hampshire. Have you all ever heard of the Hotel New Hampshire? No, I've never heard of Hotel heard. Artemis. That's a good movie. That's not yeah, a that bad fun. movie. I enjoyed that, that, that picture. That was a good uh, picture. So the, the <laughs> Hotel New that Hampshire was a good is about a family that weathers all sorts of disasters and keeps on going in spite of it all. It's noted for its wonderful assortment of oddball characters. That's Joe, the summary. Uh, real Here's, quick, yeah. While, while James is reading this, look up the movie poster for uh, the new the Hotel New Hampshire. You'll want it on your wall. 
Oh yeah, it's classic. Now uh, you know I may because I do have a half sheet of the uh, gun sh- uh, shit. Go ahead, Hotel New Hampshire cast: Rob Lowe, Jodie Foster, Paul McCrane, Bo Bridges, Seth Green, uh, Jolie Richardson, Wallace Shawn, uh, Matthew Modine. Is it with the teddy bear? Yeah. I got to do on it. <laughs> That teddy bear is just trying to get to that hotel, Joe. Oh, uh, no, by the way, you, listeners, check well, that out the hotel. Seth name. Green's got doesn't have a lot of teeth in his picture in his movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Wallace Shawn, Jolie Richardson. I mean, these are names. <laughs> that, that <laughs> Let's just move stuff. on. Let's just move on. But no, I, I actually kind of. I've never about seen it. this movie. Never. Uh, heard it's directed of it. by Tony Richardson. Uh, who also gave us such things as The Taste of Honey and Tom Jones, The Loneliness. I bet that he did some other stuff, but yeah, I'd never heard of it. Uh, it, it, it was not a huge hit either because it was beat out by our next film from this weekend. They're these kids and they're out in this corn. <laughs> oh, the corn. good lord. <laughs> There's some scenes in that movie. My wife watches it every Halloween that I like. Yeah. However, it creeped actually, the hell out of me. It did creep the hell out of me as a kid. I mean, I think it probably made it worse because it were children. Mm-hmm. But yeah. and, and I guess everybody's picked up. And I hated my about, parents. We're talking so about much. maximum overdrive. <sighs> Sorry, um, it wasn't funny. Keep going. So, Children of the Corn made fourteen million six hundred thousand on a pretty low budget. So, it, yeah, it, it was a it was a modest hit, but it could not compete against the film that went to number one this weekend. Splash. Uh, Not to be confused with Sploosh, which is the one Joe's writing about the Archer cast. <laughs> Another movie that I that is a classic Holy that I shit snacks. care for. I love John Candy in that movie. I'll be he honest. Plays, he plays a different character than he normally does in other films. Hmm. He plays a kind of a perverted guy. So I actually like John Candy in that movie, but I'm with Chad. I'm about to agree with Chad. I think it's slightly overrated, and I never had a connection to it. Yeah, I never did. Even I've when I was a kid. You know, I don't remember anything about it, to be honest. I've seen it. But it nothing stuck. Nothing. I've seen, yeah, it's not one of Ron Howard's best films, but it was a huge hit. So, uh, yeah, it made $62,599,000 on a pretty modest budget. Yeah. Uh, so we get to March 16th, and I did not know March 16th is the most important weekend in 1984 now that i know both these movies came out this weekend the second place movie that came out this weekend other i'm sure splash held at number one but of new movies that came out this weekend the second one that uh, uh there were only two is of course tank with james Gunn. oh my god i love that movie as I a love, kid i did I too, too. I did too. That's a great movie. <laughs> I love that movie as a kid in fact i went to the video store once and i was appalled that they didn't have it yeah <laughs> appalled as a little boy i caught it at like I, I i remember specifically when i saw it it was like one of those two or three p.m on a saturday afternoon movies uh it used to be on the fox affiliate at, in in so out of he's Huntington going to Boy. break his kid out of prison or something like that. His, Please don't his, give me the whole a whole story. his son is falsely accused he stole a tank and and sergeant major zach steals the tank to make sure that his son because his um his uh, son stops a pimp from beating, who is also the deputy, spoiler, uh, from beating a girl. Yeah. And so the sheriff arrests him for beating up his deputy. Uh, and, and yeah. That's, but he didn't um, shoot the deputy, right? No, no. He, he, <laughs> shot, the he shot the sheriff. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, James Garner, Shirley Jones, C. Thomas Howell, it, James Cromwell. It's a fun movie if you don't think about it. I swear it. I can't remember anything about it other than fond feelings and the scene where he breaks his ribs trying to get the track back on the tank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay, that's all I remember. He breaks a but, rib or something, I think. Yeah, yeah, because he because he's using this old tank to go rescue his son because he knows that he has to be in something that he can take on the sheriff. And he's just... I tell uh, you, those small town this. sheriffs were uh, such bastards during the 80s yeah late um, 70s on through the 80s i was like i'm pretty sure they still are <laughs> yeah, but we so, don't make movies about them anymore no now it's because they're in power now <laughs> yeah, small town sheriff you know they all, they, they, if you'd like to go to my conspiracy theory website small uh, town because sheriffs. of homeland security and whatever the whatever bill they all have thermonuclear warheads 
Small town sheriffs uh, hyphen alienconspiracy.com. You can learn all about my theories. <laughs> Barney no longer has just one bullet. <laughs> um, but he has yeah, that tank, mini gun. <laughs> tank is a fun movie, but it it did it was the second highest grossing that came out of that movie because it of course got overshadowed by the much more important film to the cultural zeitgeist. I refer to, of course, the Ice Pirates. So did that come out, and that was actually number one? The, of new movies. Of new Spire movies? Yeah. At number one. But yes, of the movies that came out that weekend, it was the one that made the most. Uh, but I didn't know Ice Pirates and Tank. How could you choose, Joe? I don't know what I would have done. You yeah. I honest to God would have went to the movie theater and put a revolver in my mouth. I would not have been <laughs> able to choose and just I, ended it. I watched both of those on TBS <laughs> and too. the Fox affiliate at least a hundred times. Uh, okay. can, can We've I have talked a, about space herpes on here multiple occasions. Can we have a full disclosure, gentlemen? I think I might have mentioned this before. I've still never seen Ice Pirates. Chad, you got to watch it, especially would, now that you're older and you can look and say, holy shit, because this I, we talked about this on a previous episode. These sets look really familiar. Oh, yeah, they used all the Logan's Run sets. <laughs> I would I would sit down and watch it. Uh, it's still I just fun. Gotta find it. I just got to find it. I would there, sit down and watch it. There's some scenes that are ooh, very much of their time. That holy you know, shit, Bruce wouldn't. Valanche had a part in this. Oh, he's got a big part. Holy Jesus! Oh, no, I hilarious! I see, see, they it. need water. Everybody's run out of water in the galaxy. And I won't spoil the ending, but it's it, it'll get real familiar. <laughs> and they may <laughs> find the water. Oh, I would have never saw that coming. Thanks for ruining yeah, it for me. Yeah. Now I don't. Now, now I'm not. There's a go. whole place full of vodka. <laughs> um, was this right. a, was this a was this arthritis ridden John Carradine? He was pretty old in it. Yeah. He, yes. You know, I okay. think he really only has an extended cameo. Because I I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of when uh oh what's the Vincent Price uh monsters having the the, 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 Mon the Monster Club Monster Club was yeah. Monster Club pre Ice Pirate because you could clearly see John Carradine's hands like crippled up to where he can't even he's move. He's pretty rough in this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, um, I I would say Ice Pirates is one of those movies you could remake. Yeah, I would. I would. I, by the way, you mentioned Tank, Logan's not so Run. Much, but yeah. Logan's Run is another one that people have said they were remaking a billion times, and I would love to see it. It's just Logan's Run is one of those movies that did not age well. No, no, it needs remade, but that yeah. story is a great story. It's a good story. It has a good structure, but it did not age well. All right. All right. We're to Next March weekend. 23rd, I which forgot, is a day that shall forever it. live in infamy because two movies come out, or three. One's an international film, La Ball. Nothing about that. But Racing with the Moon comes out. And does anybody know anything about Racing with no, the Moon? No. It is 1942 set in California. Two young men await induction to the U.S. Marines and must say goodbye to their girlfriend. Directed by Richard Benjamin off of a screenplay by Steve Cloves. Here's the cast. Sean Penn, Elizabeth McGovern, mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage, Crispin Glover. I'm just going to stop there because that's the big ones that jumped out at me. But I was like, huh. I have, I've, I thought I've, I've never saw seen it. I've seen God, the boy what? in blue and I've never, because I try to watch all Nicholas. I've Kids actually seen the several Richard Benjamin's directorial films. So that's also, yeah. Awesome. So a vibe. So is 1984 just, is it just going to continue to be the, the sappy drama year? Uh, uh No, because unfortunately, yeah. even though with this great cast, they should have been number one. A uh, sadly, it had to compete against what we could only assume was a cinematic abortion called Police Academy. <laughs> Did Police Academy come out that weekend? It came out that weekend. It was number it one. Went on to make eighty-one million dollars. Oh, and I'm by the way, trying again, my best to get Pat Proft on this show. Again, he has yet you, to delete me, but he's going if, to eventually. If you if you ever have an opportunity, folks, it's free to read on his website. Go read Roger and Ebert's review of Police Academy. I thought I didn't like it, and then I read his review, and I'm like, "Gee, that's a little mean, Roger." <laughs> Pat Proft uh, was one of the writers, him and Neil Israel, and he actually posted the story of how that came about the other day. It's fascinating. I'd, I'd love to have him on the show. All right. So we, that's it. Anybody By the way, Academy? Police Academy, if you look those up, those were all number one hits up until about the fifth and sixth one. Actually, I oh, guess yeah, the yeah. sixth and, one. And, and those were nothing but a license to print money. And none of them were supposed to be big. 
and not, yeah, they were all, and they're all fairly low budget. They all made money up until they got to the six one. I'm pretty sure. I, I would, I think even Police Academy five was a, a, a number one. You, you okay, Chad? What are you the fuck are you doing? I was burning up. I had to take my, I had to take my pull over over. And we well, were just talking about Police Academy, and I think I they were all number were one saying. up until six. I have my headphones in. Yeah, no, I think six. I think City Under Siege actually City is, killed that. Is the, is the one that killed the franchise, yeah, which I mean, the they got five movies out of that. And we all agree, gentlemen, that what? Police Academy 5 is the best one. Yep. <laughs> Although I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, it's still the best one. I watched all seven. <laughs> like us. Okay, so that, that, was, that was number one. By the way, we are getting into the films that people know. We've had Footloose. And things like Repo Man and stuff like that, Ice Pirates for me. But now we're into Police Academy. Well, March 30th, we end the month with a bunch of films that people know pretty well, or at least I think they do. Uh, I know them because uh, these were all films that my parents watched. Um, uh, not all of them, but so March 30th, here's what movies came out. I'll start with the lowest one. The lowest earner this weekend would not break a million dollars. It made $950,000. That would be the film Purple Hearts. No. It's the middle of the Vietnam War. A Navy surgeon and a nurse fall in love. Oh, of course. We got by, another drama. Directed by Sidney J. Fury and starring Ken Wall, Cheryl Ladd, Stephen Lee, and, and not, not a lot of other people. Quite yeah. Probably. Arlie Army's in it uh, because it's a Vietnam War film. So. <laughs> okay. Can well, we people all, forget we, that he was actually an actor, though, before, good, uh, before Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. So and we can we can arts. all agree we can all we can all agree that the only thing Ken Wall ever did that was good, the taking of Beverly Hills. Is that him? I was that's trying to Ken remember Wall. if that's him. I actually liked that movie quite a bit when it came out. I did too. How bad is it now? I haven't seen it in, since I was a kid. <laughs> okay. Well, if, let's if get somebody that can find at Police Academy Five. Let's yeah, get if somebody if somebody feet. can find a copy of the taking of Beverly Hills and send it to John Matt Frewer, right? Matt Frewer. Yep. Um so that was the lowest grossing of the weekend. Uh, it was beat slightly by probably the best collaboration ever of Gene Hackman, Henry Thomas, and Rip Torn. I refer to, of course, Misunderstood. I've never seen it. No. I've never um, even heard of it. Misunderstood also stars an actor named Huckleberry Fox. I just think they know anything about Huckleberry Fox. Can we find out if Huckleberry Fox is still alive? Because I'd like to have him on the show. Huckleberry Fox. Look it up, folks. Yeah, I believe he, you. He he's, uh, he's still alive, even though he only, well, he did 13 movies. Uh, Terms of way, Endearment this, was the first one. This is a this is a drama uh, about a busy and absent father who must take care of his two boys after his wife dies. So, Chad, what is that again? A sappy uh, drama. Uh, Jesus Christ, 1984. Now, Purple Hearts and Misunderstood. Misunderstood did break a million, but not by much. But two other movies came out and killed them. By the way, what are we, six down. hours into this? We're only in March. Yeah. Gray Stoke. Oh, oh yeah. Tarzan, That's another Day. movie that I find overrated. I haven't seen it, though, since I, I was a kid. It. I love it. And I haven't seen it in 20 years, probably. I loved it when I was a teenager. Yes, yeah, I didn't like it as a child, so I wonder if I would like it better now because I love Ian Holm, but it I wouldn't. In, it insists upon itself. Does it really? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. But do you but know I didn't what care movie, for it as a kid. Go what ahead. movie came out this weekend? And it was I was, bo I was uh, bored. Honestly, guys, I didn't know it was a Tarzan film as a kid. Yeah, that title. <laughs> I didn't. All I knew it was called Graystroke. I never was like, I never, it never. I was a kid. He was I'm, still waiting for He Man to show. I was probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cat, sorry. My cat is literally all up in my business. I thought what you were going to talk about this like He Man's cat. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that would be Battle Cat? Yeah, or Battle Cringer. Cat. Oh, actually, Trigger. I was going to tr Trigger. Is his name Trigger? Cringer? What is it? Cringer. Tr Cringer because he cringed. Which one's the horse? <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for that stupid horse. Uh, anyway. The movie that was the first movie in 1984 to break a hundred million dollars at the box office came out March 30th as well. Romancing really? Stone. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Directed okay. by Robert Zemeckis. Yes. Uh, do you know? Um, so, Romancing the Stone. You all want to give a quick summary, Joe, Chad, somebody? Uh, Kathleen Turner is a is a novelist who's like basically afraid of everything, and her sister is kidnapped. Yep. 
and she has to try to rescue her. She plays she Joanne got... Wilder. Not yeah. Joanne Wilder. We used to work with <laughs> Joanne Wilder. <laughs> now we owe her a check. Holy shit, Chad. I didn't mean to. It's Joanne. What is her name? <laughs> it's like that, though, right? I, I'm, you've, you've thrown me for a loop, and now I'm forgetting Joanne's name. <laughs> is it Joanne Wilder? It's not. Hold I worked with her. It uh, is, but but no, Joanne, and, it's Joan Wilder. Joan, Joan Wilder. Wilder. I was Not close. Joanne. <laughs> Michael but, uh, Douglas plays Jack Colton. Yeah, and Danny so, DeVito so, plays Ralph. Yeah, and yep. Kathleen Turner has to hire swashbuckler Kirk Douglas to help her get through the jungle to save her sister. So, real quick, a uh, little bit of tidbits for this: you think of Robert Zemeckis, you think of Back to the Future, which you would direct that next year. You think of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but Robert Zemeckis had never had a hit till romancing the stone if you love used cars like we do used cars was not a hit and it was produced yeah. by spielberg this is the first movie he did that didn't have well, that wasn't produced by spielberg and it the first cut of this picture actually got him fired from another movie that he was going to do do you guys know what the story about this do you know what got no. fired from he was going to be the director of cocoon oh wow. that ended up going to ron howard because the first cut of this the studio was so pissed they had to do some additional shooting what was wrong with it? I don't know. I he's he's talked about it before that it had third act problems that he could fix. Huh. But yeah, um, but it yeah. went on to be a huge hit. It did. A lot of people like it. Uh, I don't think people talk about it that much anymore. No, no, no. I, I, and I think it's one where the 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 sequel doesn't live up to the first one, and it somehow diminishes the first one. I think. Yeah. Well, because they changed the characters. Yeah, like Danny DeVito's character should never have showed up for the sequel, but he's very important to the first one. You know what I mean? It just didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. The and it was dire- and it was it was directed by uh, Time Tracks as Louis Teague. Louis Teague. <laughs> Louis, Teague. Louis Teague directed several movies in the eighties that were solid B films. Probably should never have got his hands on the sequel to *Romancing the Stone*. Yeah. Like *Alligator*. Yeah. *Raw Louis- Deal*. Yeah, *Cujo*. Cujo, yeah, Cujo, one of D D Wallace's best performance of all time. Mm-hmm. James, what's come, what's what's up next? Okay, we get we're into April, folks, and and April they tried to throw everything out. And Chad, you'll be glad to know most of them were dramas. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, 1984, you bunch of whiny jerks. This <laughs> one was a drama that made did not wasn't a hit, did not make a lot of money, but it's it got an interesting cast. Uh, the Stone Boy. Directed by Christopher Kane, a Midwestern farm family faces major emotional adjustment after a tragedy results in the death of an older brother, starring Robert Duvall and Glenn Close. Huh. And Dean Kane. I'm sorry, Chad. I know you'd want to know. Dean Kane's in this picture. Even the poster is uh, just trash. I'm sorry. 1984. <laughs> it is. It's. For some reason, the sky's purple. A boy's where wear, wear his shirt's untucked, and then in over the clouds is Robert Duvall and a little boy and a woman hugging each other. Just, uh, before the sun rises, before the day begins, in a single moment, a family can be changed forever. All right. Well, now that Chad's taking all the joy out of life. I just um, never seen it. Keep going. Oh. Uh, the other film that came out this year that was not at all a hit uh, uh, or not a big success. It actually came out in 1983, but it made it to America in 1984. I refer to the action adventure fantasy Conquest. Never heard of it. Uh, directed by Lucio Fulci. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, Lucio yeah. Fulci gave you From Beyond. He's a horror film director. Yeah, the, the plot to it is it's an Italian sword and sorcery film. A young man armed with and a magical the, the, bow the and mo- arrows. The movie poster for, again, 1980s movie posters. If this was actually the way the movie looked, I would yeah. have been dropped dead happy with this. And Bar- he- Go ahead. A young man armed with a magical bow and arrows embarks on a mystical journey through a mystical land. There's way too many mysticals in there. There's that beeping again. Uh, to rid it mm-hmm. all of evil and join forces with an outlaw to take down an evil witch bent on claiming the magic bow for evil. Too many mystics and too many evils in the summary. Mm. In a place beyond time comes a terrifying challenge beyond imagination. Have we got to Death Stalker yet? God, hold Christ. on. So both of those didn't make any money, so they're not. They don't have a budget. But let me go through the ones that did. So. Everything made at least $8 million that came out this weekend besides those two. 
hard to hold the drama chad you want to talk about how much you love hard to hold can i just say uh, who was going to the theaters in 1984 <laughs> to see what is essentially a made for tv movie over every damn week seriously hard to hold chad is a very important film oh yeah Rick a famous rock star who falls in love with a child psychologist who only has ears for classical music it's an important plot it starred your your hero rick springfield what the hell are they doing on the movie poster <laughs> joe look this up please what's the look name up. of it again hard to hard hold, to hold. <laughs> look up this movie poster is what it hard is to it? kill she's gonna bite his adam apple chat. what is this woman doing to rick springfield on this poster well there's a couple but i know what you're i see the one you're talking about there's a couple for it looks like a vampire film if i saw uh, that wouldn't you think it was no i she's this she, is awful let's move on to the next she's one. going for the jugular jesse's oh. girl will not let his throat go <laughs> good god almighty 19, <laughs> what the hell who picked 19 <laughs> What is uh, again? This is another one where everybody's like, "Oh, everything that came out this year was awesome." So the next one yeah. is a comedy. Let's get through um, March. A Are comedy we in April? called <laughs> "Up the Creek." Bob McGar- McGraw is in his twelfth year of college, goofing his way through life. And usually, usually where Joe is from, "Up the Creek" ended with a sentence of "got shot." <laughs> Up the Creek starred uh, starring Tim Matheson, Jennifer Runyon, and Stephen First of Animal House fame. Never seen it. Nobody did, but it made some money at the time. It it made over eight million dollars. Um, Who says so, a bunch of booms? I'm sorry, it made over. It, it made almost twelve million dollars. I'm sorry. Now, oh, the uh, life raft is a woman with cleavage, Joe. I, I skipped. Uh, I skipped a movie that made ten million. I'm sorry. Where the boys are? Uh, that I've heard of. Four college coeds, virtual Jenny, outgoing Carol. Wealthy and spoiled Southern Belle, Sandra. That's a remake. And, and yes, it, it, the the title actually at one point was "Where the Boys Are" nineteen eighty four. Yep, that's it. Um, uh, it's so, a remake. Yeah. I've actually seen the original one. Let's just skip it and keep. Um, going. So, the but the number one movie that came out this week, and, and to be honest, I know very little about. It. I remember the ads more than I do the movie Moscow on the Hudson. Yeah, oh. with Robin Williams. Williams. I actually like Mutt's Moscow on the Hudson. But I haven't seen it in a long, long time. Yeah, basically a a, a Russian uh, person, a Russian saxophonist who's visiting New York decides he wants to defect. Yep. Oh, that's directed by Paul Mazursky. Yeah. It's a really good film. If you haven't seen it, it's one of Robin Williams' lesser known films, in my opinion. I probably yeah. need to watch it again. I mean, I, I I I saw it probably when it not too long after. Uh, I mean, probably when VHS got big, so maybe ninety one, ninety two. I probably was too young to really appreciate what it was about. Yeah. Um. All right. So. I think Maria Conchito Alonso also gets topless in it. I, see, I, I didn't look it up. I well, I didn't. <laughs> I tend to remember these things. See, I went to school with this guy. His name was just Skin, and then he became Mistress. Forget it. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> just lame keep going next no no i was trying to but you, you threw me off um so that's that the uh so we get to april 13th that was a friday joe and if you're going to release a movie on a friday uh they released a bunch of movies most of them failed let me go through the ones that made so little they don't have numbers for i'll just go through these quickly there's two dramas on here chad <laughs> uh, suburbia uh, Sugar care. Cane Alley, Don't care. Privates on Parade, Don't care. Far Lap, nope. Kid Co. E. Those were all ones that didn't make any money. Now, the ones that did make some money, the lowest earning that made money that they ha- still have a chart for was, uh, of course, uh, Jonathan Demme directing Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell in Swing Shift. Swing Shift. Which was another drama romance war film. Um, but... It was beat out by Iceman, which I know nothing about. Do Don't either. Oh, yeah, I know Iceman. Yeah, it's about uh, if I'm not mistaken, they it's uh, about they find a caveman, and he is thawed out, um, and they're they're studying him. Oh, okay. I think I remember that too. Yeah. It, so is it is it in the same vein as um, oh, uh, what's that movie with Polly Shore and See No Man? No, yeah, it's a uh, Timothy Hutton, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It is yeah. Timothy Hutton. Sorry, I just got it to pull up. 
Yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah. The Neanderthal man found frozen in ice is revived by an Arctic exploration team who then attempts to use him for their own scientific... Um, I actually enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, oh, it was directed by, uh, by Fred, Fred Schlepsey. Schlepsey. Yeah, Schlepsey. With whatever. Danny Glover. Yeah. Um, All right. From the uh, guy, he uh, by the way, he directed Roxanne, you all, which is a is a great, uh, great movie, which was not released in nineteen eighty four. Or no, no, uh, but no, uh, yeah, great. And say, what uh, did the telling of Cyrano de Bergerac? What de Bergerac. did these movies Burr. all lose to though for this weekend? What's Friday Thirteenth? So of course they lost to Friday Thirteenth Part Four, the final chapter, which, which was some... the end of the franchise because it's called the final chapter, and surely these people didn't lie to me. Well, real quick Jason's about not that in that one, right? Yes, that Jason's in it. It's part five that he's not in. Okay, thank you. The uh, well, he's in it, but it's not really him. It's people dressing up as him. Or, right. or you could say that part one doesn't have him in it. But anyway, so and that's the one that uh, Tom Savini came back to do the effects for, and a lot of people really, really like. That's some of the people that four and six seems to be a lot of people's favorites. Six is the uh, psychic, right? That's seven. Seven shit. <laughs> yeah, that kind of you could have. I could've, keep. You could, I don't know why I know it. Ugh. Keep going, Christopher Glover. A uh, Christopher Glover. Crispin Glover's in four. Oh. Um, nor is he in six. No, he's in six. Shit, I can't remember. Keep going, James. Which one has Weekend and Bernie's guy in it? Seven. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that psychic Jason is seven. Okay. New York Jason's eight. Eight. So we get to April twentieth. Space Jason later. is 10. <laughs> yep. Only three movies are released on April 20th. Two of them are international films that don't have numbers. Those were Murder Doc, Ucidi de Paso de Danza, and Kipper Bang, which I assume has something to do with Kippers and inappropriate relations. Um, <laughs> but the movie that was uh, that did get released, again, Chad, you'll be glad to know, it was a drama, was Champions, starring John Hurt, Gregory Jones and Mick Dillon, the true story of Bob Champion, a British steeplechase jockey who in the late 1970s was diagnosed with cancer. Rather than succumb to the disease, he stages a a, um, a, a miraculous recovery and then goes on to win the 1981 Grand National Steeplechase. So it was a document, it was not a documentary, it was a, 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 bi a biographical film that failed at the box office, making only 200000 So not only so far but it's john hurt have we got dramas but i still am pissed that night court was ranked number 20 <laughs> <laughs> keep going keep going keep going hey we're now to april 27th we're sp picking up steam by the way i'm uh, looking at box office police academy for the friday the 13th was still rolling strong run under he is actually beating romancing the stone but keep going wow um so uh the um so April 27th, we get two films, and I've got to look one of them up because I meant to look it up earlier, and I want to make sure I get this uh, correct. It was a comedy uh, against a drama this weekend, and the comedy was called Young Lust. Uh -huh. Now, Young Lust is an important film for a couple of reasons. Directed by Gary Wells, it stars Fran Drescher and Dana Carvey. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to bring it up because I like Dan Carvey. Oh, and George Went. George Winson. Um, so there you go. It's a soap opera parody is all it is. Okay. Like, that was a comedy. Uh, did not uh, make a lot of money. It was beat by a thriller suspense. I'm sorry. I said drama. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. Uh, Love Letters, which was uh, made in 1983, but released internationally. Uh, released in the U.S., obviously, April 27th. Um, directed by Amy Holden Jones, who also wrote it, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. It's about a young woman who discovers her mother had an affair with a married man 15 years before, so she starts her own affair with a married man. Kinky. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Check it out. James Keach is in it as well. Let's get to the next weekend. I'm sorry. I thought you liked uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I'll just tell her not to appear on our show next week. That's fine. I'll cancel it. You tell that bitch I said why she got them Halloween pictures out yet. May 14th. It's, it's, it's you mean May say, 4th. I, I will say something about I love letters. If you May look 4th. at a steal of Jamie Lee Curtis and James Keach making out, it looks really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so here's May 4th. Uh, as they may mean, nothing this weekend actually failed. 
Uh, the lowest earner was Alphabet City, which was an action film. Anybody know anything about Alphabet City? No. I'm not going to look yeah. it up. Uh, um, followed by Hard Bodies, which was a comedy. Oh, yeah. With uh, Wait, is that the one with the twins? Um, I don't know. Could you just say it more provocatively like twins? Nope, that is not the twins. No, uh, it, they hire a guy to, who comes. I actually seen this uh, late <laughs> at night. Uh, I f- uh, last year and it was because i think what's her face i wanted her on the show as a small part in it and it's stupid <laughs> it's about a, these two assholes get are getting divorced and they rent some place near the beach and they hire this surfer dude to help them get chicks to come in that, it, that's it sounds and they have sex with them that's what i'm saying it's there's yeah just bleh. there's nothing to talk about also released this weekend, which was not a big a big hit, but has a great cast and and it's pretty high rated still to this day. It's the Bounty, the the, the Bounty, which is a retelling of Mutiny on the Bounty with Mel Gibson, Anthony Hopkins, and Sir Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, um, and Daniel Day Lewis uh, and Liam Neeson, and God, it's got a great cast. Um, so if you've never seen the Bounty, you probably should check that one out. Um, but it was not number one because it got beat by. 16 uh 16 candles but 16 candles got beat by breaking <laughs> breaking beat 16 candles really breaking, 16 candles made 23 million dollars breaking made 36 million dollars that explains why it got a sequel a canon film beat 16 candles 16 candles man lovely sound. Um, you're all ready for May 11th. Yeah. Yeah, sure. The one that uh, didn't do well, Gab- Gabriella. I'm not going to look it up, but you'll be glad to know that Firestarter went on to make $15 million because I'm a Firestarter. That's yep. what you um, George, that being said, and, I didn't know what went up against the Firestarter. I didn't know the Firestarter opened against The Natural, which is a drama. But it's a heck of a drama. Oh, it's a heck of a drama. Yeah, yeah. No, See, I, I thought it was. I always thought it was boring as a kid. I wonder if I'd like it now. I didn't see it until I was an adult, so I liked it. So I can. Yeah, tell I was you gonna say it's. Kid. It's. Uh, I watched natural. Firestarter as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Firestarter has not gotten any better. It's gotten no. way and much worse, and it's probably one of his best, most easily filmable or at least adaptable movies. Firestarter yeah. looks like a made-for-TV movie now, where The Natural doesn't. Okay. Well, by the way, and 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 I just want to say, 1984 was a heck of a year for Wilfred Brimley. Wasn't yeah. it? Popped up in several of these films. He was doing okay. Now Joe Don Baker is in this as well, so they can't all be winners. But The Natural could be one. Um. So so The Natural, and then uh, May 18th we get two uh, new films, Making the Grade. Yeah. And Finders Keepers, both comedies. Finding 20- the Grade sounds kind of familiar, but I've never seen it. Making the Grade. Yeah. Um, uh, May 23rd, which was a Wednesday, they did a Wednesday release. And this was the first film of 1984 to break $300 million because that's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Well, I was about to say, to- we have to be getting close to. Uh- I was going to say, Making the Grade had. had- Andrew Dice Clay. I don't care about Harrison Ford. Let's talk about Andrew Dice Clay for a little bit. <laughs> really? I'm looking at the poster. All I see is Judd Nelson. Yeah, he's in it. Um, no, yeah, he's not in this in the poster at all. But no, yeah, he's in it. He plays a he plays a tough guy, big hairy arms sticking out. Anyway, so yeah, Indiana Jones. Yeah, never heard of it. What about an overrated piece of turd that is? By the way, do you know what they tried to open against? Uh, I'm afraid uh, of snakes. I can't do nothing. What? Are Why you imitating you... me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because it's not. It's not nice. By the way, do you know what they tried to open up against? Uh, uh, against that particular film. What? The only the movie that they released on the Friday after the Wednesday was the classic 1984 comedy, The Chattanooga Choo Choo. Oh. I've An unscrupulous football it. team owner, Bert, played by George Kennedy, will get $1 million tax-free if he lives up to the terms of his recently deceased father-in-law's will, starring George Kennedy, Barbara Eden, and Melissa Sue Anderson, and Joe Namath. Oh, and Clue Gallagher. So, you know, check that out. 
There you go. Um, What's next? We get to June. I want to hold on, hold on, really quick. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah. All right. Real quick, we've never really done an Indiana Jones film uh, episode. Should we save it for that? We'll save it for that. We'll save it for that. Right. Especially uh, given some of the changes to the announcements about the fifth movie, but more on that later. Right, right. So we get to James, June who, first. Who, who, who actually wrote the the song Chattanooga Cuckoo? Chattanooga Cuckoo. Yeah, that. <laughs> Chattanooga Cuckoo, bad bad. Cuckoo, Cuckoo. You say who wrote that um, song? I've what actually band? seen the Chattanooga Cuckoo. He wrote Pennsylvania Six Five Thousand. Yeah. Uh, ah, uh, which will never be as good as Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Six Five Thousand. Uh, um, quick story by why James is thinking Chattanooga that. Choo Choo was written by Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller, yeah, I remember specifically in All my music way, class. Glenn Miller, oh, it's... them showing us the Glenn Miller story starring Jimmy Stewart and talking about how factual it was. I'm like, no, you. Even then, I was like, there's no way. All oh, this is <laughs> sorry, factual. Oh, uh, all right. Now, by the way, June is movies every- don't lie. <laughs> June is when everything goes sideways about how big certain films got. Yeah, because so we're start, getting close to something. Let's Too start June something. first because I don't care who you are. There's a movie that came out in June that you, you liked, if not loved. June 1st, these three films come out. All in the Streets same weekend. Of, Streets of Fire. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. But Well, hey. hold on now really quick. <laughs> it is not a good movie. It uh, it does star Michael Perret, but it has Rick Moranis in it, and it was uh, it's directed by oh, damn, damn it, Chad Walter Hill. Walt, Walter Hill, and I think that may be Walter Hill's first big bomb. You got to remember he'd made Forty Eight Hours a couple of years before that, uh, yeah. and, and but that's that was his first. Ugh. I don't. It just didn't work. No, people but never it, talk about it anymore. But it does either. have Diane Lane in it, man. And it, it, but I think there's songs from it that people know that they don't remember the movie. It's kind of like Eddie and the Cruisers. Yeah. On the dark side. Oh, yeah. um, so Streets of Fire made five million six hundred thousand. Uh, it was beat in for second place of new movies that came out that weekend by Once Upon a Time in America, which was heavily cut for America. Yeah. Uh, but all of them were overshadowed by them finding a dead guy in space. Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock <laughs> came out that weekend. Did that open big? Uh, it went on to make eighty-seven thousand. So yeah, I mean, compared Another to other damn drama, you mean eighty-seven million? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, eighty-seven million. Yeah. So, uh, so it did well. I mean, it was no Star Trek Four. Well, that was great. We're, yeah. we're, now listen, we we've got a break here, and I know this is going to be a big cliffhanger. Just like the cliffhanger when Virginia Mayo disappeared and we had to find out if she was going to be replaced by Virginia Miracle Whip. Remember earlier, guys, when I said I had a terrible joke in my head that I couldn't get rid of? I thought he was going to talk about Virginia I just Madsen. did. Virginia Mayo and Virginia... First off, I wouldn't replace... Both of them are terrible. Well, I almost, uh, but- when we were texting back and forth about eating sandwiches out in front of your yard the other day, I almost put, whatever you do, Jesus Christ, bring your own mayo or Miracle Whip. Chad won't have it. I've had mayo the last two years, and it yeah, never gets for me. Eat. Yeah, just for you, because nobody else eats that nasty crap. <laughs> James will. Christy will. Everyone but the Jennings is. is, is. I bet your daughter, daughters would if someone introduced them to it. No, I. oh, we've introduced it. They don't like it. Mm, that's because you've been but they do like ranch dressing which i immediately threw them in the closet and said never again was it why do you hate virginia mayo chad (laughs) what did virginia mayo ever do to you she's in the best years of our lives chad that's a really good movie by the way it is and chad hated my favorite movies of all time anyway we'll finish up this 1984 thing as soon as we straighten chad out thank you tune in gee Grrrr. <sighs>